Happy Tree Friends was my childhood. A statement that could kill somebody. Oh man. I just don't get on my camera. I'm picking it up. Sorry about that. Hi my lovelies. And welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to discuss a show that had such a impact on the early 2000s, love it or hate it, um, but shockingly I haven't seen any videos on yet, and that show is Happy Tree Friends. Happy Tree Friends is a flash animated cartoon series by Mondo Media, created by Ken Navarro, Rode Monty Joe, and Aubrey Ankrum. Since its debut, the show has become a popular internet phenomenon, garnering quite the cult following over the years. And as indicated on the official website, the show is not recommended for small children. Notwithstanding the cute appearance of its characters, the show is, well, um, extremely violent, with pretty much every episode featuring blood, gore, and violent deaths of our beloved characters, to the point of even being taken off the air completely in Russia. Happy Tree Friends was kinda a pioneer for the future of online animation, proving you don't need a massive budget and network behind you to become a great success. Being an independent versus having like the usual restrictions and limitations when it comes to, you know, television definitely helped this show stand out. After all, this was around the same time that shows like South Park were just starting to push the envelope. And that's what the creators of Happy Tree Friends set out to do. So today we're going to be diving into the world of Happy Tree Friends, from the ups and downs to the potential future for the show in present day. So to get there, we must start at the very beginning. <laughs> Mondo Media, formerly known as METCH is what I'm going to say because I don't know how to say this to be honest, is an American multimedia company that mainly produces online animation um, aimed at teens and young adults. Why I bring up that name is the company was founded in 1988 by John Everstead and DeAndre O'Malley in San Francisco, California, where they started out creating content for tech companies and releasing video games in the early 90s under that name. But when said games ended up underperforming, they switched their focus onto animation instead under a new name, Mondo Media. The creation of Happy Tree Friends first started out in the late 90s, being created by three people, Aubrey Ankrum, Rode Monty Joe, and Ken Navarro. They began working at a rather small independent company, Mondo Media. While working for Mondo, the three of them wanted to create their own cartoon and began kind of conceptualizing what kind of cartoon it would be eventually deciding to run with the idea of like parodying many various children shows but specifically it's similar in concept to the infamous itchy and scratchy show from the simpsons what sets them apart however is instead of it being like a running background gag this concept is our main entertainment and is fully expanded upon. This show started off as sketches Ken and Rode would actually draw back and forth to each other to, you know, make the other person laugh, eventually deciding that they wanted to pitch the show to the executives at Mondo Media, which to their surprise was accepted, though not all of them were initially on board for, um, obvious reasons per se. In fact, Ken went as far as to slip the occasional dollar into like the pitch folders for the executives, um, half joking, but also in a way to kind of like bribe them partly because he so badly just wanted to get this show off the ground. And you can tell how much these creators like cared about getting this show off the ground because they've all done voices for the characters. Luke Davidson says Ken do Cuddle's voice. Like, I'm not even gonna talk about the voice acting in this video because so many voices are attached to, like, our iconic characters. It's kind of crazy. I don't think I've ever come across a piece of media where it was like that, but all of the creators of this show have done voice work, and I just think that's something to appreciate. But back to the pitch. After having their idea accepted, they were then ordered to make a pitch short. Um, in typical fashion for like TV shows and such, like a pilot. With this, we got the iconic short Banjo Frenzy. This was a 36 second short that centers around a blue dinosaur with a banjo, who's obviously very similar to what would become Lumpy, and then three woodland creatures who were earlier designs of Giggles, Cuddles, and Toofy. In this short, one of the strings on the dinosaur's banjo snaps, and the woodland creatures proceed to make fun of him. So, you know what he does in return? He um, brutally kills all of them <laughs> with his banjo while he laughs the whole time. <laughs> Ugh. 
Was that the bite of 87? So what happened next, you may ask? Well, this show got greenlit by the executives, of course. When pre-production of the show began, Ken and Road invited storyboard artist Warren Graff to help develop the show. He later went on to be the senior writer slash story editor for the show, helping create the show, you know, as we all know and love it. Warren has been actually pretty, like, a bit active on TikTok and has a playlist where he's answered multiple questions in regards to the show, um, from ships to, you know, the controversy. So if you are interested, I would totally check it out. But anyway, where it really all began was December 24th, 1999, when the very first Happy Tree Friends episode was uploaded to the internet titled Spin Fun Knowing Ya via their very own website, since at the time, that's how things like this were distributed, with Google being a fairly new concept. The episode featured the likes of Lumpy, Toothy, Cuddles, and Giggles, and this episode would become their very first success, reaching a whopping 15 million hits per month, which is a hugely successful thing for that day and age. Like, this is the very new internet we're talking about. Today, you could get 15 million views no problem, it's easy, but back then that was crazy. So really from this point forward, it became extremely clear to Mondo Media that this was only the beginning for Happy Tree Friends, and they truly had a hit on their hands. In 2006, Happy Tree Friends finally got its own TV series and began airing on MTV in the US and in Europe on Comedy Central and a lot of other channels that spanned across 50 countries. In the years following Happy Tree Friends' popularity online, Happy Tree Friends did continue to air new episodes at film festivals, which caused it to only grow its fan base. People simply couldn't get enough. Similarly, it was shown at Comic-Con, well, segments were shown, um, and then segments were also shown on the website a few weeks later, but the Happy Tree Friends um, official TV series premiered on September 25th, 2006. But by this point, Happy Tree Friends, you know, airing in roughly around 50 countries, this got it so much exposure to millions of people, in fact. Because of this, they eventually continued to expand the brand by making a number of shorts, merchandise, comics, and even a couple video games. From mobile games to flash games, and even an Xbox console game called Happy Tree Friends False Alarm. But even with this TV series only getting one season, Mondo Media saw the sales, and they saw the seemingly cult following the series had garnered. Hell, I didn't even know Happy Tree Friends started with a TV show before I did research for this video, because you know what really solidified Happy Tree Friends' spot as like a staple of the early 2000s and internet culture as we know it? YouTube. <laughs> The official Mondo Media YouTube channel was created on January 22nd, 2007. They uploaded all kinds of clips to the channel because as we talked about, Mondo Media, despite starting off creating video games, is known for their cartoons like Dick Figures and Deep Space 69. But Happy Tree Friends is by far their biggest IP by a long shot. See, the moment they started posting clips from Happy Tree Friends episodes on the channel, it practically exploded, like sending the show directly into the spotlight with these videos starting to go viral almost immediately upon their upload. We see corporate YouTube channels all the time nowadays. I mean, the internet has become an essential corporate tool for YouTube specifically, where they tend to mass produce content and having a whole team behind them, giving them, you know, a significant advantage for sure. But back in 2007, this was really a never before seen revelation. Monzo Media stood out amongst all the individual creators on the platform at the time because they weren't a single content creator. They were a company. Because of this, they ultimately became one of the most popular YouTube channels by 2013, grossing over 1.3 billion views and having surpassed the 1 million subscriber mark. They even got recognized by YouTube themselves, making multiple shorts for their YouTube channel, which surprisingly didn't contain gore. These being the YouTube 101 subscription short and another about copyright, which happens to have its comments off because let's just say it didn't go over too well. There's even an infamous Happy Tree Friends music video uh, for the Fall Out Boy song, Carpal Tunnel of Love, where they even have like self inserts of themselves that get brutally killed along with everyone else. Yeah, 
This was actually released on the Fall Out Boy website before YouTube was a thing, but it was uploaded to the platform eventually in 2012, I think probably following the popularity of Happy Tree Friends on the platform. But it's at this point where things took a rather shocking turn. Um, the attention the show got, obviously it should come to no surprise hearing Happy Tree Friends ended up getting caught up in a bit of controversy. And I mean, it was a controversial cartoon and it paved the way for a lot of future adult animation cartoons as we know it by pushing the envelope the way it did. But as early as 2005, parents became outraged with this show, specifically because there was an infamous Washington Post article where Catherine is angry because she caught her six-year-old son watching Happy Tree Friends, which over the years, with this show growing in popularity, sparked a conversation about regulating children's internet access and what content they consume, well, that's where the conversation should have been focused. But you know what these parents at the time decided to do instead? Blame Mondo Media! Some even going as far to send the creators excessive amounts of hate mail, like that was going to do anything. This case was specifically when the show was on television, but I'm gonna focus on the internet side of things because the amount of posts I've seen from kids in my generation having unsupervised internet access is crazy. It's like for Gen Z, it was a universal experience. The sad part of this is we can already see the cycle repeating with with whatever generation of kids that are growing up today. I don't know the name, I'm sorry. I don't know if any of you are aware of like the state of the YouTube Kids app and like Elsa Gate, but it's extremely terrifying. Point being, the amount of people who recall this show because they remember it traumatizing them at a young age is more common than you would think. And I don't want people taking what I'm saying out of context. I'm all for keeping adult content out of the reach of children. But the people in the 2000s were having this conversation for all the wrong reasons. While this show appears to be innocent enough on the outside, with its cutesy colorful character design, it's rated PG-13 for a reason, and wasn't intended for your children whatsoever. It's not instilling harmful ideology onto them because it wasn't crafted or geared towards children. They shouldn't be watching it to begin with. They even have a warning at the beginning of the episodes themselves in a large font before the cartoon begins, similar to something like South Park. The warning, um, CTV cartoon violence not recommended for small children or big babies, is also displayed in two places on the homepage of the Happy Tree Friends website. Neither the about the show or the FAQ page indicates that the show is appropriate for young children either. If anything, an experience like catching your six-year-old watching Happy Tree Friends should have been a wake-up call to monitor his internet access more closely because after all, that's your responsibility at the end of the day, along with the rating system that's in place, of course. With this time being the new age of the internet and us being some of the very first kids to grow up with it fully, parents barely had a grasp for it themselves and clearly struggled with managing their children's viewing experience on the World Wide Web, which I can't say isn't surprising. Let me know your opinions in the comments, but it's just infuriating that they had to blame the creators who obviously didn't intend this to reach children anyway, and worked very hard on this show, clearly putting a lot of love into it. It just brings me back to the fact that, kind of separate tangent, a lot of people like to consider animation only something children can enjoy, or because it's adult animation, it's not meant to be taken seriously at all, so we can't win. As if there's not people who, like whole teams involved in these shows that animate it, storyboard, putting their blood, sweat, and tears into these projects. But anyway, my personal exposure to Happy Tree Friends came one day when I think I was like six or seven. I was on our family computer in my living room scrolling through Netflix, just looking for something to watch out of boredom, and then I saw the cute and cuddly characters we all know and love and decided, let's take a look. So I actually just found out that Happy Tree Friends was listed on Netflix as appropriate for kids for a period of time. So this story, it just makes a lot more sense now. And that's probably why I decided to watch it because I wasn't, I wasn't searching out for something that wasn't appropriate for me. It just like was recommended, I think. And when I tell you, this is such a core memory for me that I even remember everything down to the name of the episode I watched, aka Wrong Side of the Tracks, which is actually the first episode of Happy Tree Friends, so that definitely adds up, which takes place at an amusement park and follows Flaky being hesitant to ride a roller coaster at the amusement park, but Cuddles forces her to anyway, and the roller coaster stops midway through and they are just upside down and Lumpy has to fix it. 
they have a close call with Cuddles almost falling out of the ride, but luckily they're able to get off safely. So we follow Lumpy's adventures trying to fix the ride, which include killing Nutty, stabbing Mime in the eye with a plank of wood, oh? which he still ends up nailing to the ride anyway, and using a pencil as a nail to hold some of the tracks in place. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which snaps as soon as people are riding the ride because he decided to reopen it, thinking he fixed it. Cuddles soon loses his hands and falls fully out of the ride afterwards. Handy gets like directly sliced through the middle. Um, we can see the anatomy and all, and this all happens while Lumpy, the ride operator, is asleep. Mind you. So then he attempts to save Lifty and Shifty, but instead flings them into the theme park's entryway that shreds them into itty bitty pieces. I guess he was heroic enough, okay, because when he tries to save Cuddles and Petunia next, unlucky for him, he soon after, um, disintegrates? I don't know how else to describe it, like... And then Cuddles and Petunia's cart falls onto Sniffles, who's been using a metal detector throughout the park this whole time, like I didn't mention it, um, finding nothing, but he soon finds a gold coin right before the cart falls on top of him, crushing him and Petunia and Cuddles dying on impact. This episode then ends with Lumpy smiling like with a framed photo of their dead bodies, which doesn't even make sense. I just watched you die too. And then every episode has a quote, so the quote for this episode was, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Also, can I just note, when you go to the Happy Tree Friends wiki and like view any of the episodes, they have a fucking survival rate. I'm, I'm losing, losing my, my mind. mind. Amount of surviving characters, three. Who survived? I mean, Lumpy, but we just watched him disappear with our own eyes. That doesn't even make any sense. I'm actually dumb. So <laughs> basically at the beginning of this episode, remember it starts out with Flaky not wanting to get on the roller coaster. That's who the survivors are. Um, Flaky is one survivor, Disco Bear is the other one, and Russell. Because none of them got back on the ride, but Cuddles got back on the ride, if that makes sense. So that, again, raises the question, Lumpy did not survive. Amount of dead main characters, 10. Total survival rate, 23.8%. So what was my reaction, you may ask? I enjoyed it. I have no memory of this show, like, ever scaring me, in fact. Before you say it, I can already smell the comments, you know. I'm quirky. I'm not like most girls. Okay, but now that I'm an adult, it totally makes sense why I ended up becoming a horror movie fanatic. Anyway, I remember right as I finished it, my mom like finally walked into the room and asked me what I was watching. And I just went, oh, nothing. And I walked out of the room like nothing happened. That's why when I was reading this article and it said, Joshua turned to me with a sheepish grin. He clearly had a sense I wasn't happy about his new friends, but he couldn't have known really what I was thinking. It, weirdly enough, reminded me of myself and this core memory. I even remember watching the infamous Lemonade Stand episode another time. I don't know if this was the same day or like roughly around the same time, but it didn't scare me either. But I mean, hey, um, at least I turned out okay, I think. This one is probably the more disturbing one of the two though. It follows Giggles and Petunia who, did you get the reference? Anyway, they're having a lemonade stand and the nails holding up their sign fall out of place, causing the sign to smack <laughs> Giggles in the face, ripping her skin off. And then Petunia looks over and spits her lemonade out, like out of shock. And it goes right into the wound. <laughs> Then it cuts to a while later, they've fixed the sign, um, but the same thing happens once again, crushing and pinning like Petunia this time to like the lemonade stand. 
but Giggles has no idea this has happened because she's still cutting lemons for some reason, despite the fact that she can't see, like, because of the bandages of the wound. So, like, why would you... Wouldn't she go and squeeze the lemons instead? Wouldn't that be easier for her, Petunia? Where's the logic? But anyways, this causes Petunia's eyeball to pop out, and this causes Giggles, in return, to mistake it for a lemon, so she slices it in half, squeezes the juices out of it, and drinks it, and then puts sugar in it because it doesn't taste, like, right. But now that you kind of see the length this show went with its plot, um, it's the perfect segue into another infamous moment in the timeline of Happy Tree Friends, aka being banned and criticized by a whole country. <laughs> Similar to South Park and how this show also pushed the envelope, this came with its fair share of censorship. With the most infamous instance being when Happy Tree Friends got itself in a bit of controversy with the Russian government themselves. Yes, we're backtracking a bit, but this began in 2008. The reason was essentially being too gory for a kid's show. Um, well, here is the solution to that problem, actually. Hear me out on this one. It's not a kid's show. <laughs> Yeah, so Happy Tree Friends was broadcast on the channel 2x2, which broadcasts mostly foreign adult-oriented animation around the clock. Shows that are just generally for an older audience, like the ones that have warnings. In fact, the channel's general manager actually stated, rather than argue, we took them off the air, although any television criminal drama in Russia is about a hundred times more violent than any of these cartoons. I think another reason for this though was mostly because the cartoon was actually nearing the end of their leasing period anyways, so it was ultimately smarter to cut it short, it wasn't going to be worth the battle. But it did not stop there because years later in 2021, Russian government banned the distribution of Happy Tree Friends completely and several other animated films within the country. Now Lula, why were these shows and filmed banned you may ask, um, being harmful to children. Watching the animated series undoubtedly harms young children's spiritual and moral education and development and contradicts the humanistic nature of upbringing inherent in Russia. That is a direct quote from the regulatory body for Russian television. What a joke. Luckily, none of this really went on to affect the cartoon itself and the controversy happened before it like reached pop peak popularity on YouTube even. But this made me think how kind of crazy it is looking back on how much Happy Tree Friends was able to get away with on YouTube back in the day. Like, if you think about how strict YouTube can be with their censorship nowadays, but, you know, boy am I glad it did. Would Happy Tree Friends be able to do what it did today in 2023? Absolutely not. <laughs> a usual series on television where episodes are usually to be released on a weekly basis during a season, episodes of Happy Tree Friends are made in the process of ordering and requesting by Mondo Media. So this means if Mondo does not order like an episode of any type, the production will not occur. To date, there have been four large hiatuses for the show, one being a two-year-long hiatus during the television run of Happy Tree Friends. This hiatus was called after the release of From A to Zoo on October 16th, 2005. Following that episode, Happy Tree Friends had no new episodes for almost the entirety of 2006 because of the TV show being produced. The second one was after the release of CU Elevator on October 1st, 2010. After the release of the episode, no canonical episodes would be released until the release of Clause for Concern on December 8th, 2011, just over 14 months. The next one was after the release of the episode Dream Job on March 6th, 2014, just over three years after the end of the previous hiatus. During this time, it was heavily speculated and feared that the series was going to be canceled, but there were actually multiple reasons for Mondo Media to call this hiatus. The most prominent reason being due to the production of multiple films by Mondo Media, and one of these was a potential Happy and Tree Friends movie. During their time at San Francisco's anime, video game, and cartoon convention in 2015, Warren Graff and Ken Patak confirmed that no new episodes were planned due to the fact that a movie was indeed in the works. And those were really fun to do, but um, at this moment there are no new episodes planned. Um, it's more of a, I think, budget thing than anything else. Yeah, they're working, well, I mean, it's not a secret. They've been, they're working on putting together a movie. So, uh, they are, they, 
I know it's not a secret because I read about it on the internet too. Maybe they told me about it, but they also read about it, so it's out there. Um. As we can see today, no film was ever made and no further information was really shared. Little is known about this project, in fact. According to his Twitter feed, Ken Navarro actually said he had heard of the movie, but currently was like not involved with it. He's also stated that, at least to his knowledge, the production of the film had not yet to begin. In all honesty, I can totally see why this was never able to get up off the ground fully, and I don't expect it to happen in the future. I mean, even fans in the very footage of Warren and Ken, like, had the very same speculations as me, are characters don't even speak English, like they don't have an actual language at all, they don't talk, so how would this have worked? Yeah, although the idea of doing a Happy Tree Friends feature is um, <laughs> it's daunting. It's a little frightening. Yeah, not exactly sure um, you know, how to crack that nut. It doesn't lend itself easily to a 90 minutes uh, feature length film. Unless we jump the shark in ways that we have said we wouldn't like making them talk. Yeah. Would they yeah. talk? No. Would they talk? Um, I don't want them to ever talk. Okay. Yeah, you know. How are you going to like pull a 90 minute movie of no talking and still end up killing everybody? But yeah, according to Homeplay Entertainment's website, the movie is currently in pre-production, but with no official word of its production since 2015-2014, it's speculated that the project has been halted or scrapped altogether. When a fan asked about whether the film had been cancelled, Ken actually replied a treatment that he and the writers did was all work that, um, you know, he knew of for the movie. And finally, our very last hiatus brings us back to present day, Happy Tree Friends was never actually cancelled, but since 2016 hasn't released any new episodes, making it their longest hiatus to date. It's kind of crazy to think that Monzo Media seems to be doing absolutely nothing with their most popular IP these past few years. I mean, besides the 3D NFTs. Ew! What an interesting artifact! Okay, seriously, and more importantly, we might be turning a new leaf for Happy Tree Friends. About three weeks ago, as of recording this video, the official Mondo Media YouTube channel posted a video called Comeback, with blurred footage of the Happy Tree Friends, obviously, and the text being the same kind of infamous font, so rightfully this got fans very excited. Ultimately, it was revealed a couple days ago it was a teaser for a new Happy Tree and Friends game. However, the title does state, new episode and the game. And the description reads, on September 27th, fans worldwide rejoice as Happy Tree Friends, Twisted Humor, and Chaotic Antics return in a brand new episode on the Mondo Media channels. Simultaneously, the gaming world is set to ignite with the launch of the Crack Pet Show Happy Tree Friends Edition. This will be Happy Tree Friends' first episode in seven years, and Ken Navarro also shared a short teaser on Instagram, revealing the title is Too Much Scream Time, starring the father and son duo of Pop and Cub. According to his caption, it's just a short, but as I said, the YouTube channel trailer says episode, so who knows how long it will actually be. Now, I had this video planned about a month ago when I purchased a Happy and Tree Friends blind box, which I posted an unboxing of on shorts, and I got giggles. Point being, this happened to be a very, like, odd coincidence I just happened to stumble upon when going to their YouTube channel to look for clips of the show, and now I'm, like, genuinely excited either way. Don't call me. In fact, don't contact me. On September 27th, 2023, I can't hang out, okay? I'm booked, I'm busy for the new Happy and Tree Friends release. But yeah, this has fans very hopeful, more than ever, for new content to come, though this is purely, obviously, a promotional short of some kind for the game. A lot of people still would appreciate a comeback, and I'm actually kind of shocked that Mondo Media hasn't at least worked on a spinoff of some kind. Even as someone who's a fan of this show, I definitely understand why it like, kind of went on a hiatus. The premise can get old very quickly, which I think is what caused its decrease in views and drop in popularity over the years. I don't think it will ever reach its prime again, but I think its best chance they got is to branch out a little bit at least and give us a fresh take on this otherwise classic cartoon. I think this would even help a new audience find and discover the show in the process. This isn't such an outlandish idea either because Happy Tree Friends has had a spinoff show in the past. It was called Kapow. The series shifted its focus on Flippy and Splendid and Buddhist Monkey, 
um, accompanied by new characters and was released on September 2nd, 2008, but it was extremely short-lived. It also had this comic book-esque like art style that honestly I think is super cool and kind of outsells the original. But that's pretty much it as of now for Happy Tree Friends. I hope you guys enjoyed this deep dive and let me know in the comments your experiences with the show or hopes you have for it in the future. I'm just very curious and I will see you guys in my very next video.